So we are going to start electrochemistry. So in electrochemistry, the first thing that you have to understand is about electrolyte. You guys have studied a little about electrolyte in ionic bonding as well. When we discussed the properties of ion compounds, we discussed that ionic compounds are electrolytes. So basically, why we do call them electrolyte? Uh, it is because these electrolytes are the compounds which conduct electricity, but there is a condition for these electrolytes to conduct electricity. And the condition is this, when they become molten or when they are in their aqueous form, then they do conduct electricity. Otherwise, they would not conduct electricity. Molten means when a solid substance is melted, and aqueous means when a solid substance or when any substance is dissolved in water. Is this understandable to all of you? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, Safan, did you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, Sami, did you understand? Okay. Now, the question arises here. They are conducting electricity only when they are molten or aqueous. It means they do not conduct electricity in in their solid state. So that's why we do not call them conductors because conductors are the one we have studied about conductors in the physics that conductors are the one which conduct electricity. It doesn't matter in which state they are. Now then another important thing. In conductor, electricity is conducted due to the movement of in conductors. I'm talking about conductors. The electricity is conducted due to the movement of which particle? There are three moving electrons. When the electrons move freely, then they that's why they conduct electricity. But when we talk about electrolytes, electrolytes have our ions, they do not have a free electron, they have our ions. So when the electrolyte, the compound is in its molten state or in its aqueous state, then these ions are free to move. And when these ions are free to move, it can conduct electricity. But when we observe its solid structure, its lattice structure, and that lattice, these ions are fixed in the other position and they are not able to move. So hence, that's why uh, they do not conduct electricity in their solid state. The examples are, the first common example is all ionic compounds are electrolyte. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Manahil? Yes. Aisha? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So note this down, then we will proceed further.
Okay, is everybody gentle here? Yes, sir. Can you catch up? Yes, sir. Is the picture for this quickly? Okay. Okay. So. When we talk about ion compounds, ion compounds always have ions in their lattice system, and at room temperature they are always solid. So that's why heat ions are not needed. But when if I heat the ion compound on heating, when its melting point is achieved, the solid turns into liquid, and as it turns into liquid, as it becomes molten, the ions start to move, so it can conduct electricity. On the other hand, if I dissolve ion compound in water. Ions are again formed. The ions are free to move in water. What are the issues? No, but but in water, it doesn't stay solid, right? It gets dissolved over there. So it can get free from its lattice. So the ions can move. Is this clear? Okay. Have you took the picture? Yes. Okay. Now, beside all ion compounds, all acids. Are electrolyte, all bases are electrolyte, and all salts are electrolyte. Okay, first understand, then note down. Okay, Manan, just wait. When we talk about acids, the most common acid, can anyone give me an example of a most common acid? Salt acid. Hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid, HCl. So HCl is a covalent compound, it means it do not have ion. So if it turns molten, still there are no ions. But when it dissolves, then it will form ions. So acids turns uh, or and or work as an or as an electrolyte in their aqueous state only, not in molten state. When we talk about bases and salts, so all salts can produce ions whether they turn molten or whether they turn aqueous. Okay, bases are of two kinds. One are the bases which have a which are metal oxides and the other one are metal hydroxides. These two form ions whether molten or aqueous. But there is another base which we call ammonia. It forms ions only in its aqueous form. So that's how you can identify when they are going to conduct electricity and when they are not. So in aqueous state. Whether it's a salt, whether it's a base, whether it's an acid, whether it's an ionic compound, all can conduct electricity. When we talk about salts and bases, salts and bases conduct electricity in their aqueous and in molten both. But when we talk about acids, acids conduct electricity when they are aqueous only, not in their molten. Is this understandable? Yes, Safwan and Aisha. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Now the process of electrolysis. First look at the definition. Then you guys can start to note down. See, it turns from two words. One is electro, which comes from electricity, and the other word is lysis, which means breakdown. So basically, we consider electrolysis a process in which electricity is passed through an electrolyte. Electrolyte means a compound about which we have talking about, right? So it have our ions. So when we pass the electricity. You are also late today. When we pass the electricity to an electrolyte, so that electrolyte decomposes into its elements. So see, in the compound, they have ions, right? For example, if I take the example of sodium chloride, so sodium chloride have a chloride ion and sodium ion. And these ions, when it turns aqueous or molten, these ions starts to move free. But when I provide the electricity, then this sodium ion turns into sodium metal, and this chloride ion, chloride ion turns into chlorine ion. So that's what the electrolysis uh, process do. It breaks down the electrolyte by the help of electricity into its element. 
Is this understandable? Okay, note this down quickly. I shine Safwan. If you guys have any confusion, you guys can ask. Yes, Safwan, is this clear? Yes, sir, it is clear. Aisha? Yes, sir. Why you don't have any notebook or a pen? Do this with me. But why you are so late today? See, it's 423 now. So we perform the electrolysis in electrolytic cell that it is that we use to do the electrolysis is called electrolytic cell. So we are going to discuss electrolytic cell now. First note these down. No, molten means doesn't mean dissolving. Molten means turning into solid. solid. So molten means solid. No, molten means turning the liquid. So the difference is when acid turns liquid, acid do not form ions. When salt turns liquid, there are ions already there which are fixed, which can easily move. Two elements. Then by the electrolysis. We turn the ions into elements, the ions in the electrolyte. Tanya joined the good she left. Ashes present. Rohail is present. Mustafa. Who is Mustafa? Mustafa. Are you for the dining class or you have? No,
Equus. Yes, Arshan Safwan, if you guys have any uh, confusion or any query, you guys can ask. Manali, is this clear till here? Yes, Rohi? Yes. Yes, Mustafa. And... Sure. Okay. Yes, Safwan and Aisha? Yes, sir, it is clear. Yeah. Yes, everybody didn't in here? Yes, Rohit? Okay. Okay, I can hear you. Okay, that's fine. Let's proceed further. Now, as we have discussed that electrolytic cell is basically used to perform the electrolysis, right? And electrolysis is the process in which what happens? Electricity is through and electrolyte. And as a result, electrolyte breaking down into end sediments. Is this clear? Okay. Now let's see. When we talk about electrolyte, okay. So oh, when we talk about electrolytic cells, so electrolytic cells have three components. Okay. First, understand this. One is called electrodes, the other one is called electrolyte, and the third one is a battery and wires. We have discussed about electrolyte, right? All of you understand what electrolyte is, right? Yes, I shine Safwan. Yes. Okay. Then what? We use battery as we have discussed that we have to provide electricity. So to provide electricity, we use battery. The wires are there to complete the circuit. Now, what are electrodes? So electrodes are basically the conductor. It is it is always in the solid state. So basically it's a conductor. So it is usually in the form of a rod or strip, which usually we made up of graphite because graphite do conduct electricity. But besides graphite, we can made it from any metal as well. But in most of the cases, or mostly, we are uh, going to use graphite as the electrodes. Okay. Now, each electrolytic cell has two electrodes. One, for example, we have a battery, right? This is the battery. This is, let's suppose, positive terminal of the battery, and this is the negative terminal of the battery. If I connect a wire over here, and if I put a one electrode or a one graphite rod, on this terminal. So, as it is connected to the negative terminal, so we consider it or we label this as a cathode. Is this clear? Yes, Aisha and Safwan? Sir, can you explain it again? Yeah, sure. Okay, Aisha, can you tell me what are cations? <laughs> I'm asking you guys. No, yes. I don't know. You don't know. These are the ions, right? And ions are of two types. One are called cations and one are called anions. Yes, Manali, can you recall what are cations? Yes, see. That's what happened then when you don't remember the things. Cations are positive ions. Okay. Cations are positive ions. Any atom carrying a positive charge is called cation. And why you are saying negatively charged due to this? See? So the simple rule of attraction is a positively charged ion or oh, oppositely charged is attract each other and same charges repel each other. Is everybody agree on this? Yes. Yes. Yes, Aisha, did you understand this? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, Safwan, did you understand this? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, what I have said earlier that there is a battery. 
and for example this is the positive terminal of the battery and this is the negative terminal of the battery if i connected the wire over here and i have connected that wire with the one graphite rod so that graphite rod now becomes electrode okay and i have used another wire which is which i have connected with the positive terminal and then i have connected another graphite rod over here okay then this becomes another electrode now as the right hand electrode is connected to the positive terminal so it means this whole rod or this whole electrode is going to carry the positive charges right and this the left hand electrode is going to carry the positive the negative charges is this understandable yes aisha yes sir yes safwan yes sir now what were cations we have just discussed positively charged ion so if there is a any cation in the solution then it is going to attract it towards negatively charged plate that's why we call it cathode we do not call it due to its negative charge if we call it cathode because cations are attracted towards cathode so you don't have to remember the charge of cathode and the charge of anode okay then it is must be going to be anode you have to remember this thing because you have uh, developed the concept of cations and anions in ionic bonding that when the positive ions are formed yeah. we call them cations and when the negative ions are formed we call them anions so if cations attracted towards anything so that must be negative charge and as cations are attracted towards that plate that's why we are going to call it cathode and anions are negatively charged so if they are going to attract towards anything then that must be positive charge and as anions are attracted towards that plate so that plate is called anode so that's how we labeled all them cathode and anode now is it clear or is still confusion yes safwan did you understand yes sir aisha did you understand now yes sir okay so just recall one thing if it's an electrolysis process and it's a negatively charged ion so it is going to attract towards over here okay what does a positive ion means if it is a deficiency of electron and initially when we discussed the process of electrolysis can you say can you recall what was the main objective of the electrolysis what will going to happen at the end of the electrolysis you just read the definition we have discussed what does definition say Okay. Broken down into its into its elements. So it's is is an element is considered as an element. No, it's an ion. So it is going to reach. It is going to attract it towards the negatively charged plate. Okay. How it will become an ion? By gaining electron. By gaining electron, right? Because electron have a negative charge. and this sodium ion is carrying a positive charge so when a positive one and negative one are added then the species becomes with a no charge so now this is an element is this clear yes safwan and aisha is this clear yes sir yes sir yes, so in the last chapter we have discussed about reduction and oxidation so if gain of electron occurs so what does gain of electron means reduction reduction so see that's what i have written at the bottom that at cathode reduction occurs because whenever there is a gain of electron we call it reduction, reduction. is this clear yes sir yes aisha and safwan yes okay yes sir Now, when we talk about this chloride ion it is a negative charge what does it means it has a one ex electron extra so the uh, why we are doing electrolysis to get the elements so it means now it's an ion it's not an element so it will turn into element when it loses the electron so it loses the electron to the positively charged plate and that loss of electron is called oxidation so at anode oxidation occurs 
Is this understandable to all of you? Okay, now note yes. these points down. Assalamu alaikum, Fatija. How are you? Wa alaikum assalam, sir. I am good, Andhra. How are you? I am good. Why you are so late today? Sir, due to internet issues. Oh, okay. I will be writing the in a five minutes. Okay, yes, everybody is completed till here. Yes, Safwan, Aisha, and Fazira. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
what we do with the electro electrodes what is the state of electrodes electrodes are basically two rods or strips which are connected to the battery so they are solid and in which state electrolyte exist in the liquid or molten state so basically if there is a electrolyte and we are using that electrolyte as a molten Molten means I have to turn that electrolyte into its liquid form. I am not dissolving with him water, water, right? So, electrolyte is an ionic compound, and ionic compounds have a very high energy demand. So, we have to provide a continuous heat to keep that electrolyte in its molten state. Otherwise, if we do not provide a continuous heating, then it will surely turn into solid again. It does not stay liquid. So if we have to perform the electrolysis of a molten electrolyte, we have to continuously per provide a heat that we provide by uh, putting a plane below it. And as the electrode, electrolyte becomes molten, what we will do, we will dip the electrodes in the electrolyte as you are observing in the diagram. So if we, when we dip the electrodes in the electrolyte, then electrolyte can also conduct the electric current. Is this clear? Okay, so just right now note this point. Yes, Safan, did you understand? Yes, sir. Fatija? Yes, sir. Aisha? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did you understand, Manahe? Yeah. Rohe? Mustafa? What was your name? Mustafa. Mustafa. Molten is an electrolyte, and the electrolyte have have what? If you recall the definition of electrolyte, electrolyte conduct electricity due to the movement of free, not electrons, right? Ions. So in a compound, there is, for example, I have told you the example of sodium chloride. It's a compound, so it have a sodium ion. That is a positive ion and there is a chloride ion. So in this electrolyte, there are both positive ions are there as well as a negative ions are also there. And the positive ions are going to be attracted towards cathode, which is a negatively plate, charged plate, and anion are going to be attracted towards the anode, which is non-positively charged plate. And then oxidation and reduction is going to occur at those cathode and electrode. What was oxidation? loss of electron and what was reduction gain of, gain of electron so if you guys can't remember you can just try it over here gain of electron and loss of electron so when that gain and loss of electron took place from the ion then then ion turned into element otherwise Ion doesn't turn into element. Is this clear to all of you? Yes, Safwan, Khatija, and Aisha. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, uh, I didn't get that how we are saying that it's the reduction at one end and it's oxidation at one end. Yeah, we are going to discuss over here. I will going to explain the whole process over here. So then you will understand where why that uh, you know that reduction is loss of electron, right? Yes. And we know that the, uh, oxidation is a gain of electron. Uh, so oxidation is a gain, loss of electron, and reduction is a gain of electron. So I'm going to explain the whole process over here. So first case in our CN syllabus is you have to understand the electrolysis of molten electrolytes and where we use inert electrode. So what does an inert electrode mean? Which, 
yeah, which does not take part in the electrolysis, which does not react itself. So that's why we use graphite in our carbon. So graphite is an inert electrode. Besides graphite, the metal which can which we can use as an inert electrode is can be platinum. Okay. If we take any other metals, then they are considered as an active electrode, they do take part in solution. Okay. So here we are going to discuss the electrolysis for an inert electrode. Okay, so first note this these two points. Then here I have explained the whole process. For example, I haven't connected the battery over here. And I have provided the heat so the electrode become electrolyte become molten. And in that molten form, ions are moving randomly and freely. When I connected the battery and I uh, applied the current, electrodes become charged. See, the one becomes negatively charged and the other becomes positively charged. Then what will happen? The cations in the solution which are moving randomly, see, you can see over here, those cations are actually attracted towards the negatively charged plate. But when the battery is not there, these positive ions are actually moving randomly in the solution. In the same way, the negative ions are actually attracted towards the positive end or the positive electrode. Is this clear? Now what will happen? As it's a positive ion, uh, Khatija, here it's your answer, the question you have asking. In the electrolysis, what will actually happen? The electrolyte is decomposing into elements. So it's a positive ion. So what it will do? It will going to gain the negative charge means the electron from this electrode. And as a result, it will become an element with a no charge. In the same way, this have an extra electron. So see, it gains the electron. So it means reduction occurs over here. It have a negative charge, it means it have an extra electron. So what it will do, it will loses that extra electron to the plate. And as a result, it also becomes a neutral atom. So loss of electron occur, that's why it's oxidation. Is this clear? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So here we have all the processes that are taking place. I have written down step by step. The ions are moving freely. Current is applied. The electrodes become charged. Cations attracted towards cathode gain electron means they undergo reduction and becomes element. Then anions attracted towards anode loss electrons and becomes element. So then, if the electrons are lost to the plate, then it means that plate is actually started accumulating the electrons. Mm -hmm. So what battery will do? Battery will start taking the electrons from that plate and providing to the negative plate. Cathode. Yeah, from anode to cathode. So see, that's what happens. Electrons travel from anode to cathode from the external circuit. So as the negative ion, it have an extra electron, it loses the electron. It loses the electron wear to this positively charged plate. Right? So when it loses the electron over here, so this positive charge plate start or this electrode start accumulating these positive charge negative electrons, but it have to stay positive. So that is the function or the working of the battery. What battery will do? Battery will start attracting these negative charges and providing it to this plane. Yeah, is this understandable to all of you? Yes, sir. Yes, yes Mustafa, Mustafa, Uhail, Sami, Aisha. Okay, now do this quickly. And here we will be the ending our class. Just complete it first. And why I'm saying to complete it? Because when you note down these points, if there's something that you don't find, uh, it clear, then you can ask me again. That's why I'm saying to note it down. Otherwise, it seems that you have understood. I also think you guys understood. You also thinking that you have understood. But when you start writing the points one by one, by keeping the focus over there, 
then if there is any ambiguity or any query that arises in your mind, you can ask, okay? Now keep that cell phone in the bag, okay? Good. Have you noted down this time? First note it down with us. Third part we will do this. Just do it over there on the top. Sir, can you explain the last point, the fifth one? Yes, you can ask again. So, you can explain the last point. Which one? The fifth one? Yes, sir. You are asking about electrons travel from NO2 cathode from the external circuit, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So think, this is the negative electrode. Why it is negative? Because it is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. I think everyone shouldn't look over here. So if anyone else have any ambiguity, then it must be clear. And this is the positive plate. What we have decided, what cations will do? They will move towards the end. Uh, and afterwards? They will. Uh, they will. Uh, they will? Gain electrons. Gain electrons. So see, when cation reaches over here, that cation will going to gain this electron. So what will happen over here? That this cation becomes an atom. Over and then what happens to that negative charge? Hmm? Yeah, it becomes neutral. So it means there is a decrease in the negative charge over here on the negatively charged plate. When another positive ion approaches over here and it gains another electron and it turns into an atom. So there is another decrease in the negative charge. Is this point is clear? So when the positive ions reaching the cathode and gaining the electron, so there is a decrease in the negative charge. Now think of the negative ion. When negative ion reaches there, what it will do? It will lose the negative electron to over here and become neutral. So here, the what happens to the positive charge? It will start decreasing. Yes. See, it will start decreasing. So the last point states that if what basically this is the purpose of the battery that battery is what battery is doing as the electron lost over here on this plate battery extract those electrons towards itself and then provide it over here so in the in that way this plate does not have decrease in the negative charges and this plate does not have a decrease in the positive charges so the initially the charge in the battery taking yeah and then from the whole the process the electrons are moving so, from the external is a positive charge to negative charge to be yes yes so substitute hmm? oxidation of the na? no they occur simultaneously at the same moment yeah. with the same speed because initially battery also have a 
tendency. So it is also providing the positive and the negative charges. And then battery start taking the negative charges from the electrode and providing to the negative. This is the circuit. This is the wire. Yeah. External circuit. Yeah, that is the only external circuit. The wires. Aisha, did you understand now? Yes, sir. Okay. Sir. Yes. Sir, I asked you that when the anode is negative, it is positive. It is normal to keep it positive. It is not positive to keep it in the cathode. Yeah, that's what happened. The battery actually expects that negative charges from here. The electrons from here and move that electron towards cathode. The positive okay. charge does not move. Only electrons move, right? Okay, sir. Okay. And positive charges are the cations, so cations does not move in the solid. Okay. They are stay fixed in the lattice. You are done? Okay. Yes, sir. Pan, did you understand this? Yes, sir. Okay. Aisha, did you understand this? See, we are right now discussing that the electrolysis of for when we use inert electrodes. So inert electrodes are those which do not take part in the reaction, which do not take part in the electrolysis. They just provide a you know bridge to move the electrons. That's it. Yeah, so, so that carbon can be used. Yeah, platinum can also be Yeah, so that's why we really do use graphite. So graphite is a cheap carbon. Graphite is a carbon. Carbon have two forms. One is graphite and the other is diamond. Carbon logos are electric. In its graphite form. Diamond. In its diamond form, it does not. No, if graphite tends to be gaseous, no, in gaseous form, there are few things which can conduct electricity. If, if, if in gaseous form it becomes charged, then obviously it can conduct electricity, otherwise it will not. There must be a charged particle in the gaseous. Yes, everybody completed till here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So I will be ending the class over here and we will continue the process this thing in our next class. Okay. Oh, sir. Okay, sir. You in the next class, take care. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz. Sir? Yes. Have you shared the